In this video, we back up an unlimited number of files and folders from a single button press on our Stream Deck. Hello everyone, and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. This is the second video in our current series of productivity tips featuring the Elgato Stream Deck. Last time, we mapped every single function available in Microsoft Office to a Stream Deck button, and you'll find that video linked in the written description, where you'll also find details of our Primer tutorial created two years ago, covering basic functionality. You'll also find Amazon affiliate links for those of you looking to purchase any of the three physical Stream Deck models. We're sure that you've already worked this out, but this video series is not for streamers. In fact, it's for anything but streaming, taking advantage of the Stream Deck system functions in what we might define as everyday computing. Still to come in this series, we'll take a look at file renaming and handling, as well as Windows system functions. And in this video, we look at reducing file and folder backup to as little as one button press. It might help if we look backward from our endpoint. We want the process to conclude with the creation of a new backup, or by updating an existing one. We want this to be triggered by a single press of a Stream Deck button. That button press needs to launch a backup routine, which we'll need to create. There are many ways to achieve this, including simple command line entries, but we want to make the process as accessible as possible, so we'll use SyncBack, and specifically SyncBack Free, which, as the name suggests, means we won't be paying a penny for this project. We've covered SyncBack Free in a previous tutorial, and much of that content is also directly relevant here. We'll spend much of the tutorial creating the backup routine, with the involvement of the Stream Deck arriving almost as the punchline to the tail. Although there's a little setting up to do, once the backup routine is defined it can be summoned with a single button, no matter how complex. Syncback Free can be obtained via the link shown on screen now, and again reproduced in the written description. Clicking the large blue download button downloads a 22 megabyte installer file, which we click to run. We can happily click yes when challenged by user account control, or we can suppress these warnings permanently by following the steps in the tutorial shown on screen now. Whilst we always provide details for jumping beyond the installation instructions, in this instance we'd urge you to follow the next steps, as there's a piece of information which we need when setting up the Stream Deck routine. We click to accept the license agreement, then click next, before clicking a second time at the information screen. Novice users can accept the default installation location, although it remains our preference to click Browse, then navigate to a custom location. Whichever option you choose, you'll need to take careful note of the exact path listed here. The easiest method of achieving this is to select the full text, then press Ctrl C to copy, before pasting it into a document for future use, or taking advantage of the extended clipboard, as featured in this tutorial. This is the piece of information which we'll need when we create our Stream Deck button, and it will need to be exactly replicated. With the text safely copied, we click Next. Installation is swift, and once complete we click Finish, immediately launching the main interface. Let's now apply some context to this backup job. Of course, you have completely free choice as to your backup source folders, their destination, and your backup type. For the purpose of this video, we've chosen to create a mirrored copy of our documents, downloads, pictures and video folders. We want to synchronise them with a USB stick, which we'll store safely once the backup has been performed. We've placed sample files into each of our directories, and they'll be copied to the backup drive when our Stream Deck button is pressed. Let's now create the backup routines for each of the four directories. Once our USB stick, or backup drive, is detected by the system, we launch File Explorer, navigating to the root directory of the drive, where we click for a menu, selecting the option to create a new folder. Our folder requires a name, and we rename it Documents. Our intention here is to create a folder structure mirroring those folders we wish to back up, so we scale this up with additional new folders, named Downloads, Pictures and Videos. We now return to the main SyncBack Free interface, which is currently empty. We therefore click to create a new profile, and we begin by giving it a name. This profile will back up the content of our computer's Documents folder to the newly created Documents folder on the backup drive. Unsurprisingly, we name the profile Documents, before clicking Next. Backup type is hugely important, and you may wish to read the help text to understand your choices here. Our preference is to use the mirror option, meaning that at the time the backup is run, whatever exists in the source directory will be reflected in the backup. Crucially, this means any files which have been deleted from the source will also be deleted from the backup when run. 
If this isn't what you're looking for, selecting one of the remaining backup types will be more appropriate, and we click next to advance. Most users will also simply click next again to progress at the following screen. The following dialog box simply announces the arrival of the main profile window, and we click OK in acknowledgement. The main window opens, and our task here is to provide location details for source and destination folders. We therefore click to select the source. From the dialog which appears, we select the documents folder on our PC, and clicking select folder nominates it as the source of the backup. As an aside, our machine here has defaulted to the OneDrive documents folder as the default, rather than the purely local equivalent, and we'll publish a future tutorial as to how to change between the two. For the purpose of this video, this is simply the location where our documents are stored. Now that we've defined the source, the logical next step is to define the destination, so we now click the destination folder, and from the dialog which appears, we navigate to our USB drive, clicking on its documents folder, before clicking select folder. This populates our destination field, meaning that we now have supplied all of the information required to complete the backup. When we click OK, we are warned that our profile is set up in a way that will delete files from the destination which are not on the source, and this is the nature, and also the risk, associated with a mirror profile. Our destination will always mirror the source, even if it has to erase files to do so. Acknowledging this warning, we click OK. At this point, we're offered the opportunity to perform a simulated run, and this is always advisable in order to verify that the backup operation will be executed in the manner we expect, noting that no files will be moved in the simulated environment. We therefore click Yes, commencing the simulated run. We see a summary of files which will be copied to the destination, as well as those which will be deleted from the destination where applicable. If we're happy with what we see, we click Continue Simulation. We receive confirmation of a successful simulation. Again, at this stage no actual backup has been performed. We now have a working template, and we can use this to create our remaining three profiles, taking advantage of copy and paste. We therefore right click our profile, and select the option to copy. The copy needs to be named, and we name it Downloads. The duplicate appears in our list of profiles. At this stage, only the profile name distinguishes it from our original profile, and we'll need to configure source and destination folders in a few moments. Before that, we'll create our two remaining profiles, by again right clicking and selecting Copy. We'll name this profile Pictures, and clicking OK adds it to our profile list. For the final time, we right click, copying the profile and renaming it Videos. We now have four near identical profiles, which will differ only in their name. We now need to properly configure the three copies. We begin by clicking our Downloads profile. As this is the first time we've double clicked, the software queries how we'd like to interpret future double clicks, and we accept the default option to modify the profile, by clicking OK. We're now returned to the familiar editing window, where we need to amend source and destination to reflect our requirements. We therefore click on the source folder, where we navigate to our downloads folder, before clicking select folder. With our source defined, we again click our destination directory, this time navigating to the root of our USB drive, and selecting its download folders, again clicking select folder. Our second profile is now configured, and we click OK. Once again, we'll perform a simulated run to check its integrity. We right click the profile, selecting simulated run from the menu. As before, we click Continue Simulation, and we can see that the simulation has been successful. We'll try something different for our Pictures folder. Where the amendment is only minimally different from the template, we can select the text, and directly over type the new information. We repeat this for the destination, where we type in the name Pictures. As before, we perform the simulated run. We'll also jump ahead, having modified and performed a simulated run on our Videos profile. We now have four fully configured profiles, and we could assign each a button on the Stream Deck to allow them to run individually. Whilst this is something we may find useful, our aim is to run all four profiles in sequence, meaning that a single button press could initiate the entire backup routine. Our next step is therefore to create a group. We again select the New option, and now need to provide a name for the profile. We'll name it Full Backup, and crucially, we tick the box labelled This is a Group Profile. We're again advised that the main window will follow, and clicking OK takes us to a different type of profile window, this time designed for working with groups. We want to add all four of our existing individual profiles to the group, and clicking this button moves all four into the group simultaneously. 
When we click OK, we're again offered the chance to perform a simulated run. This isn't strictly necessary, as we've already performed this step for the individual profiles, but we'll see it through for completeness. Note that although we've grouped the profiles, they actually run individually, and sequentially, so we click four times in total to continue the simulation. We now see our full backup group, and clicking to expand it shows the four individual profiles, each of which has been successfully simulated. We're now ready to run the profiles in a live environment, and we right click on the full backup group. We could select run, and whilst this is a safer option, it will prompt for confirmation four times, so our preference is to select run unattended, which performs its work without further intervention from us. We've now successfully backed up four source folders to four destination folders, in two clicks. By way of proof, here's our backup drive, which now contains backed up content in its documents, downloads, pictures and videos folders. We now have a backup routine, and all that remains is the fashionably late arrival of our stream deck as the mechanism to initiate the backup. We therefore drag in an open function, and source a suitable icon. We then need to supply the pathway to the syncback installation, and you'll recall that we invited you to make a note of that pathway during the installation. If you have it to hand, paste it into the app file dialog now, and make sure that it's enclosed within double quotation marks. Having closed the quotation marks, press space, then enter the name of the backup group, again in quotation marks. Your full command should look something like this. Now when we press the Stream Deck button, our backup routine runs unattended until completion. If you're curious, and would like to monitor its progress, you can always click on the Sync Back Free icon. Once you've added one backup device, you can scale this up to include your novelty USB sticks, memory cards, backup desktop and NAS drives. Crucially, this means that performing an ad hoc backup now becomes as straightforward as attaching the drive and pressing a button on the Stream Deck, leaving us without an excuse for regular backups. Join us next time in this series, when we look at file handling and renaming, and in the meantime, check out our back catalogue and subscribe for our future projects. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.